Hey everyone, uh, Alan Reynolds with Southland Organics doing another grower spotlight today with Troy and Matt Milford. And uh, it's a father-son combo, which I'm sure many of you do when you are growing birds, you do it as a family. Um, so anyway, we just want to talk about a few things. Troy, I know you have a, an engineering degree, mm -hmm. and like many growers out there, they actually have a degree or intended to do something else, but went into growing chicken. So how did that happen? Well, Matt's actually fourth generation of our family to be in the farm, on this farm that we currently have. Uh, the land that our farm's owned has been in since the late 1800s, uh, when my grandpa's uncle actually bought the farm, then my grandpa got it, built three chicken houses. So I've been doing it all of my life. Really? And, uh, you know, I remember spreading shavings with my grandpa, dump them out of a trailer into the house and with a seat fork spreading them. Oh, so it's changed a lot. And that's, as I got older, that's really what I wanted to do. Uh, got married pretty early. Uh, what we had wouldn't support the family. Uh, so ended up, I went and got an engineering degree, got a two year degree from Gainesville and uh, was actually part owner of an engineering company, director of sales and marketing, always wanting to be home yeah. and wanting to farm. That's what I wanted to do. So me and my dad built two more houses in early nineties. And uh, then we built two more in the, about 2001. And so at that time, my dad was, my, me and my dad was still doing it. So it's been a family operation forever. And uh, as it went on, I told my wife, I said, this chicken farming is gonna make it, it's time to make it because it got to work. It was yeah. all the time. Yeah. So I quit work, come home, and uh, then Matt got out of high school. He went to college for what, a year? Two. Two years. And uh, he said, I don't want to do this uh, on a farm. And I said, well, if you're going to farm, we got to build two more chicken houses. So, yeah. and now the farm supports, you know, my family and his, and we do chickens, we got cattle, we got hay, it's diversified, but it's what I always wanted yeah. to do. And that's how it all rolled back into this. And now uh, I guess if I, we're living the dream. Yeah, if you want to call it that. So a lot of a lot of kids growing up, they're like they want to do something different than their dad does or something. I mean, some of my like, I got four kids, and you know it's like they want to do their own thing and don't really want to listen to dad a lot of times. So I mean, it must be a good thing to work with your dad or in the family to to want to do this. So what made you do that? I was like him growing up on a farm. That's what I always wanted to do. Only reason I went to college was because of mama. Mama wanted me to go get a degree. <laughs> and uh, I finally convinced her one day to let me take a semester off because I was just burnt out on school. Yeah. And I never went back. Yeah. And talked them into building chicken houses and now I'm getting to do what I always wanted to. That's awesome. Very cool. ABF has been a big hit lately. I say lately, the last few years. So, what, what has been your all's toughest challenge growing birds or as a farmer? I guess growing birds when the, you get stuff, something figured out, and other farmers are going to know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Roller farmers, as far as how to grow the birds, what's working for you, and the big antibiotic free push hit. Yeah. And that's been a challenge. And it's been tough to adjust to that and finding other ways to keep your chickens healthy and keep them producing and converting like they should. So that, I'd say that's one of the biggest challenges on the poultry side. Right. Uh, finding that, you know, there's, you know, cause there's all kinds of things that's gonna hit these chickens. Sure. Uh, that you can't do nothing about. Does it come from the hatchery? Does it, is it already on your farm? And then you've got to react to that. And even if you've got a good program that's been working, you got to react in the middle of the block a lot of times to, okay, what we're doing ain't working. We yeah. got to figure something out. And and that's what it's nice too with having Matt there. It's not just my eyes; it's another set of eyes, and we yeah. can talk it over and figure sure. it out. And you talk to other growers, and you got a network you talk to. And what are you seeing? Yeah, what, what's working? So, you know, I deal with growers all over the country. I mean. There's a couple integrators out on the West Coast, all the way up to Del Marva, down to even north of Florida. And it seems like 
just when you think, even in this situation, you've got something figured out. There's something different maybe that hits. Okay. So, you know, what, has there been one consistent thing that you think in your practice or, you know, getting in there or multiple eyes or what has probably been maybe something that you all, because a lot of that stuff you can't control. You just get what you get. Yeah. So has there been one particular thing that you think has been, we've been able to do this or we change this and that's, no matter what they say, tends to be more helpful or what do you think? Not necessarily anything? Just well, it's, like you eyes. said, it's a moving target. Yeah. yeah. I think one thing that helps us, where we grow at anyhow, the we've got a lot of family and friends that grow chickens, so normally we're spread out. They have chickens that are a couple weeks older than ours or a couple weeks younger. Sure. And we kind of know what's coming down yeah. the line because within a couple of weeks, man, you, you pretty much gonna stay about the same. Yeah. Bird wise. And so you can kind of know what's headed for you. Yeah. And that way you can react a little bit quicker when you start seeing signs of it instead of trying to just say, okay, what's this gonna be in three or four days when you got a bunny that's already solved. Right. You know something that I've noticed, tell me if I'm on it or not, but before ABF, um, it seemed like growers kept their cars close. Oh, definitely. Yeah. After ABF, it was like everybody's willing to help everybody else. And to, an to an extent. There's some things you ain't gonna tell. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it seems to be a willingness to help. That is, you know. and, and chicken farming and farming in general, I, and I try to look at it like I did with engineering or anything else, it's about communication. You gotta communicate with each other, with your, with who you're growing yeah. for, and you know, be open and talk to people. And uh, you, know, you can tell, like you said, there's they some things you don't tell. Right. Because uh, it's still competition. It's still competition. Uh, just for example, in the engineering, there were things that we done that people look at, well, I can do that. They tried and it didn't work because there's that little secret that's there that you ain't gonna tell how you're doing. Yeah. And, and it's the same thing. Are we all on the top every time? No, we're not. Six houses, if we can be average or above top five, I'm tickled to death. Sure. Because you do get such a different range of birds. Right. With a six house farm, with the bigger farms, it's hard to get that consistent, you know, what we call the good birds. Yeah. To cross some six houses, you're usually going to get one or two or three of mediocre houses and then maybe two or three real good houses or you may get one bad house and then, yeah. you know, you cool you down. yeah, so you do the best you can. And, you know, is there one real thing? It's hard to say, you know, we we're using y'all's products. I think they're doing a good job. I think they're helping us. It's like anything else we played with, how we're running it and what we're doing and finally found what we feel works for us. Mm -hmm. And I know me and you've talked a lot yeah. that how other people are doing it mm -hmm. and we're doing it a little different, sure. but it's, seems to be working so right. and we change that up on flocks and we say okay this ain't working let's change this a little bit sure and you see a difference we were at a, the mulcher so belt expert at the mulcher uh -huh. and we were uh had a, a guy came through an older man who said the best thing that you can put on your farm crops whatever is your shadow oh yeah and that sounds like especially with this moving target and you're having to go, yeah, that's what we did last fall. Man, we better change it this fall. It's just paying attention. You've got what's it. going on. You've got to live with them chickens. When, uh, when there was, I was out here for them the other day, or you know, a couple months, but you had rigged something on your sprayer and you had all this stuff. And I said, dang, that's when you told me you were an engineering degree. And I'm like, what is something probably that you've done engineering wise i know i didn't kind of warn you on this oh question. yeah you didn't warn me on this my bad. Bad. but i just it makes me think so i'm thinking is there something you've engineered maybe that has been a you know maybe nothing maybe it's just like everybody out there has done something they got yeah and i think that. i think that's as much a part of farming as yeah. it is engineering yeah uh if you're a farmer and like we are you know money ain't always there it ain't always so you figure stuff out <laughs> And, uh, and I learned that from my dad, from my grandpa. And, that's, and, and I think God has truly blessed us, yeah. uh, my family, that I got to work with my grandfather wow. as a little boy, you know, building fences in the chicken house. He taught me how to do things. Right. You know, I worked with my dad, Matt's worked with my dad. And 
we learn from each other and you learn that, okay, this is broke. Do you go buy a new one? No, no, we better fix it. it or this out. ain't working the way we want it to work. Yeah. Then, okay, well, let's modify it. Yeah. And, and the knowledge that, yes, the knowledge that I got from engineering helped. The experience I had, you know, learning how to do things like uh, electrical stuff. You know, we put in our own controllers. I knew how. Mm -hmm. That saves you a lot of money. Sure. And uh, that's one of the biggest things is trying to do your own maintenance, trying to do your own stuff and trying to teach the ones behind you how to do that because when you start having to pay people to come fix everything it gets expensive sure this is one of the things i love about what i do is dealing with people who fourth generation third generation it's family mm -hmm. it's dependent upon god yeah i mean the weather you know my great pain yeah. rain crops growing blah 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 but so one thing we talk about around here, and we just did a video not too long ago about how to take care of you, mm -hmm. and that's with your family. Mm -hmm. So obviously, four generations, y'all know how to work family and keep family priorities. So give me just a couple of thoughts maybe. How do you deal with working with dad and some things like that? I mean, what is success to making sure? <laughs> uh, it's, it's a good day, so he's so to ask that question. But, uh, I don't, I, you can ask my mom, my wife, me and him fight with each other sure. all the time. Yeah. And then we get over it. Yeah. And I think that's one thing you just got to, especially with us, we can get mad about something and half the time it's about how we're doing something. I think we should do it a different way than he does and so we get in a fight. But, uh, not a fist fight. Not yeah, a fist yeah, fight, yeah, but yeah, I, mean, right. I mean, we argue with each other. Sure. But five, ten minutes later, we're back fine. It yeah. just you can't let little stuff get get in the way of something like what we do. And it's what we both love. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we've had the conversation. If it wasn't something I loved, I would not have built two new chicken houses. Yeah. Because I mean That's a that, Yeah, yeah. I mean that ties me down financially for years. Mm -hmm. But it's something that I love. Yeah. And it's something I'm willing to work for and we're both willing to work for. And so we've worked through the bad days. Yeah. And then we still have the good days yeah. here and there. But. <laughs> <laughs> to hear a son say that is is really a tribute to a father, I believe. Mm -hmm. So how have you balanced family and not made a son despise what you do? How do you balance that? God. Yeah. I, and I'm just going to be totally honest cool. with you. Mm -hmm. uh, what makes our family what our family is? is our faith in God Amen. and our trust in Him. Uh, has there been bad times? Like I said, it has. Uh, and, and me and Matt try to start every day off in our Bible and doing devotion. That's awesome. uh, I believe that God give us what we've got. Mm -hmm. God give us our family. Yeah. God give us the blessings we have. And, and can He take them away? Yes, He can. Yeah. But if He does, that's fine. I've still, still got God. And we still got our family, and I believe that's what's helped us. And uh, I didn't know this was going to go here, but that's where we're going to go. Amen. Uh, Take it, preach. You know, if it wasn't for our faith in God, I don't believe we could work together. Yeah. Because we do have that. We do have that love that God put in us when He saved our soul yep. that we share with one another, and we can always turn to Him. Yeah. And you know, we can pray about things. We can figure things out and he helps us and he guides us and directs us. So I, how does it work? There ain't no way it could work without God. Yeah. And that's what, that's what makes the world go around. Yep. I mean, in the world we live in today, what does they, do they need more than anything else? They need God. Yep. If we could find, you know, people could realize the love that God has for us uh, and feed on that instead of feeding on all this other stuff. Yeah. We'd be amazed at what would happen. And, uh, and you know, it's in chicken business. It's whatever we do. Uh, you know, I ain't gonna. I pray. I said, Lord, show us what to do. You know, mm -hmm. God us, direct us. You yeah. know, help us. And and He will. Yeah. And you say, well, Troy, that seems. Why are you asking Him to do that? Because I believe we're supposed to talk to Him about everything. Tell Him what we what we and ask Him. Yes. And uh, may not get the answer we always want, uh, but we still ask and we yeah. still talk to Him. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that's what makes it work. And that's been, and we've been blessed. Yeah. I was born in a house where 
that was first. And we've tried to keep that going down the line. Matt's got a little boy. I hope one day we see him. Hey, hey, I want to do what y'all are doing. Yeah. You know, it is a tribute, you know, to be Absolutely. able to. And I've always said it, you know, even when it was, there was a time it was me and my dad and my grandpa. I said, wow, what a privilege to be able to yeah. just spend time together. Yeah. And now it's me and my dad and my son. And that's a privilege. That's a privilege to be able to do. And uh, everybody can't say I get to go to work every day with my family. And, yeah. and we can, and families, I mean, I've saw family businesses that gets torn, it'll tear a yeah. family apart. Yeah. Uh, but to lay your head down on your pillar at night and be at peace and know that we still love each other and can still talk to each other. Yeah. That means a lot. That's good. Um, I don't even know where to go from there because to me that's that's bottom line right there. So I love it, um, and I think it's a great way to end is uh, seeing that that is the important thing mm -hmm. and what's kept this longevity going. So yeah, okay. Well, I appreciate y'all taking the time, and I hope that um, some of these growers have maybe picked up some insights or some ideas or things that may have helped you. So uh, thanks to Troy and Matt. Appreciate y'all coming out today. And uh, if we can help you in any way, please let us know. Uh, you can call us at 1-800-608-3755 or email me, alan at southbound And we thank you so much. Mm -hmm.